Hi, I'm your host, Sherry Ann Richardson, and today we're going to talk about working in the Winter Garden. I don't know where you are, but here in Indiana, we have snow coming down. We're expecting somewhere between four to eight inches of snow today. Um, it's wet here. It's been raining, so we're going to have some ice, but that's not going to deter me from working in my garden, growing vegetables and flowers throughout the winter months, and it shouldn't deter you either. One of the things that make working in the winter garden really easy is greenhouses and cold frames. Now, greenhouses are a little bit more expensive to erect and heat, to where cold frames are easy to make at home from things you may already have on hand, such as bales of straw, old windows, plastic, and wood. So it's possible to have a cold frame, even if you don't have a lot of money, and you can grow a lot of things in a cold frame. Lettuce is one of your easiest crops to start with if you've never grown anything during the winter before. Potatoes do well in the winter garden, at least here in Indiana and any zone above us. We are a USDA hardiness zone 5-6, depending on where in the state you are. Spinach, carrots, turnips, cabbage, reddish, all of your cold winter crops or all of your cool weather crops like you would start in spring are wonderful for growing in the winter garden. And the other thing that you can grow without the use of a greenhouse or a cold frame is certain blooming plants that bloom during the winter, such as hellebore. They will bloom all winter long, depending on the variety, even right through the snow. Crocus are a real popular plant for the end of winter, the beginning of spring. Snowdrops are one of your earliest bulbs that bloom. Witch hazels will often bloom in November, December, January, and February. And the way you do this, the way you decide, you know, what are you going to buy and when is it going to bloom, is you read the garden catalogs, and then after you read the catalogs and see what it says, do a little bit of research on your own. Because just because one garden catalog says it's going to bloom in December, it may not bloom in December in your area. So a little extra research into the plants is always a good idea. I'm also the author of the Complete Idiot's Guide to Year-Round Gardening and the Complete Idiot's Guide to Seed Saving and Starting. Both of those books are available on Amazon.com. They're in local bookstores. I also have several other books that are available on the Amazon.com Kindle. There is both articles and video about winter gardening, year-round gardening, in fact, that is available on my website. And so I had mentioned a little bit about making your own cold frames. Now, this is how easy it is. If you can get four bales of straw and you can put them into a square pattern to where they're butted up against one another, simply plant inside of that, or if you have your plants already growing, place them on the outside of the plants, and lay an old window on top. Now, obviously, you're going to want this window laying someplace where you don't have, say, a large tree overhead that could drop branches or so on on it and possibly break the glass. If you don't have an old window, you can make a top out of just plastic. But you're going to have to have some way to secure that plastic down, such as pieces of wood. You could make a square and pull the plastic over and just staple or tack it with some nails. If you use plastic, I suggest you use some bricks or some rocks to hold it down. Obviously, you're not going to put this in the center. You're going to hold it down against the straw bales. This is just going to keep the wind from being able to pick it up and blow it off because that can cause some problems. The other thing that is really, really great in the winter garden to use for plant protection is row cover, sometimes known as frost cover. And this is nothing but a woven fabric, a specially woven fabric, that will help keep frost off. It heats up the area underneath of it by a few degrees, and it does allow both light and water to penetrate. So now if you're in a cold climate, that's not going to keep your plants going through the winter, but you can use it inside of a cold frame 
just make sure you suspend it above the top of the plants so it doesn't touch them because if it touches the plants and frost touches it, you're going to have damage to your plants. Another interesting thing about using cold frames and row cover is if you didn't get your winter garden planted, but you want to go ahead and plant for spring, there's a number of crops that you can go ahead and seed in. And you don't have to use a cold frame or row cover over the top unless you have a problem with the birds or if you have poultry, I suggest you do it if they can get into your garden. Anything that might dig up those seeds and eat them before they germinate would be reason to use a cold frame or a row cover. And some of these seeds that you can plant, just as I would suggest waiting until after December 21st so you know your ground is good and frozen. You need the top layer to be workable, but you want the ground underneath to be frozen. And if you can't work the top layer, you can use compost. You'll want just a thin layer, depending on what seeds you're planting, just to cover the seed. You can plant peas. You can plant lettuce, radish. Anything that you see that self-seeds in your garden, which is basically, again, your cool weather crops. Sometimes tomatoes will come up, sometimes tomatillos. If you grow some of the grains, they will self-seed in. But you can plant these during the winter months, and like I said, just cover them like you normally would. If you have a problem with critters in your garden, go ahead and use a cold frame or the row cover just to keep the critters out. If you don't have critters, don't worry about it. And as soon as the ground falls enough in the spring that these seeds can start to germinate, they will germinate and they will begin to grow. And these plants are often stronger than the plants that you start from seed in the spring once the soil is warmed up. A lot of times these seeds can, these plants can just be let go to seed. If you do this, you may have a problem with pests in your garden. It just depends. So you do want to keep an eye on that, and you do want to realize by not rotating your crops, it is an invitation to pests because they're going to know where to look for those plants. So the way you can combat this is by companion planting. Surround those plants with other plants that help protect them. Um, for example, squash is often used as a trap, trap plant. So you can plant that near other plants, such as beans or whatever, and it will attract the bean beetle. And when you see it on the squash plants, you can just pull those. You can either hand pick the pest off or you can pull the plants and you can destroy them. Now, any plant that has a disease or a pest, you do not want to put in your compost pile. If you do, you're taking a chance of spreading that problem all over your garden. So it is best to bag them and burn them or get rid of them in some other way. Definitely don't put them back into the garden. We plant a lot of flowers around our vegetables here. Again, that's not only a good way to keep pests off, but it's a good way to make the garden look pretty. And some of the good companion plants that you can plant over the winter are bachelor buttons. You can do calendula or sometimes known as pot marigold. And again, celosia, anything that drops seed on the ground in your garden and will self-seed, you can go ahead and plant directly in the garden as soon as that ground is frozen. The other thing that you can do in winter if you don't want to plant and you don't want to grow a winter garden is go outside on the warm days and remove any weeds that you may have missed. If the ground is dry, you can go ahead and cultivate it, but do not work your ground if it's wet, especially if you've got clay soil. You want to wait until the ground is dry to work it. And when I say work the ground, you can cultivate it. If you're working with raised beds or you don't till, you can top it off with compost. If you use straw on your garden as a weed block, you can put that down. I don't suggest pruning any plants in the wintertime, especially if you're in a cold climate, with the exception of fruit trees and grapes. We do those here in January uh, because that's the proper time for us. 
And but otherwise, I don't cut anything back because the plants here can get severe winter damage. I don't even prune my roses in fall or winter. I wait until the springtime when we have good growth and we're almost to our last light frost, and then I go outside and I do that. If you do do garden cleanup during the winter time, or even in the fall, you want to keep an eye out for egg sacs, especially praying mantis egg sacs. And if you see those, leave them in the garden. You can trim up all around them if you need to. But don't lay them on the ground because ants love to eat praying mantis eggs. So, again, be aware of what beneficial insects are in your garden and what their nests look like or their eggs, where they may be laying their eggs, and don't disturb any of that. You want to give those eggs time to hatch come spring. And oftentimes I will leave that stuff into my garden clear into June if I think it still needs to be left. Another thing that you can do in wintertime, if your ground is workable, is you can continue to transplant things that are at least two zones hardier. For example, if you're in a zone 5, but you have some plants that are hardy down to zone 3, and you can work your ground with no problem, and you want to divide those, or you want to dig some up to put in pots to put in your greenhouse or cold frame, you could do this just be careful, and when you do move the plant, you want to mulch it well. You can use pine needles. You can use straw. You can use bark chip mulch. You can use compost. But you want to make sure that root system is good and protected. I also plant bulbs sometimes into the winter months. Again, as long as the ground is workable, there's no reason why you can't go out and dig a hole, put the bulb into the ground, it may or may not bloom come spring. It's going to depend on how much of a chill it got. If you find bulbs and you didn't get them planted and you can't work your ground, I suggest you put air holes in the bags. You put them in your crisper. You keep an eye on them so they don't draw too much humidity in that bag. And you keep them cool. The other thing that you can do if you don't want to do that is you can put them in pots making sure you plant them to the proper depth. You can put the pots in your greenhouse. You can force the bulbs indoors in a sunny window seal. Or you can put them in a cold frame. You can put them in the ground if you want to bury them and mulch them well. And those bulbs will emerge come spring. After they're done flowering, you can put them in the ground. And again, because you're transplanting in the springtime, they may not necessarily bloom the next spring. It's just really going to depend. Some do, some don't. So, again, you're listening to the Experimental Homesteader Radio Show on Blog Talk Radio. My name is Sherry Ann Richardson, and I have all of these tips and more on my website, experimentalhomesteader.com. Oh, and I do invite you to call in with any questions you have on working in the winter garden, or if you have any tips you'd like to share with our listeners, those are always welcome too. If you're trying to heat a greenhouse and you live in a cold climate, you know that there can be times that there are problems. So you want to have a backup heat source. Kerosene is not the best in a greenhouse because of the fumes it puts off. A lot of plants don't like that, especially tomatoes. But if you're only using it for a short time, you may be okay, especially if you've got good ventilation to help get those fumes. The one thing you don't want to do is let the greenhouse temperatures drop too low, especially if you're growing tropical plants. And that is very easy to have happen, even if your heat is only out for like an hour, especially if it's at night because you don't have the sun. So you can have a real problem there. We like to heat our greenhouse, it just solves a lot of problems that way. Electric is nice, but again, if you have a power outage, you've got a problem. Some people use a generator backup on their greenhouse. That's okay, too. It can get a little expensive. If you do it with wood, you know that you have to be there 
during certain times to make sure that wood burner is filled. And I've never had a problem personally with that. So, again, it is a personal preference. If you want to use electric heat, there are computer programs that you can buy that if the heat goes down, it will ring up to six numbers for you. So you can get someone over to your greenhouse. But, again, it's imperative that people understand that the temperatures will plummet pretty fast as soon as the power goes out. So the other thing that you can do is cluster your plants together. You know, don't set five or six plants in a greenhouse and expect to really retain a lot of heat. If you have just a few plants, it's a good idea to put some 55-gallon drums in there and fill them up with some water. Don't seal them. Leave some holes in the top because what will happen is in the daytime that water is going to absorb the heat from the sun and at night it's going to slowly release it. Now, this doesn't work real well in Indiana, but it does work a little bit. And it's a really great way to grow plants that say your greenhouse is 50 degrees, but the plant wants 60 degrees. So you can cluster those plants that need the higher temperature on top of these 55-gallon drums. And it does keep it just a little bit. Another thing that you can do is put a greenhouse inside of a greenhouse. And this is really nice, especially for uh, plants like tomatoes and peppers that like it a lot warmer. And all this is is you section off a shelf or you can build a little area. You cover it with plastic. You set it up with its own separate heater. So you've got a double layer plastic. You've got a tiny heater that's going to heat this tiny little area and keep it warmer for those plants that really need the heat. You can also use heat mats. That's another way to keep it warmer. And speaking of heat mats, for those of you that dare to grow tropicals in cold climates, if you don't have your tropicals already packed up for the winter, and hopefully you do, then I would suggest that you go ahead and get those mulched. If you're going to leave them exposed, as in you're just going to mulch the roots, but you're going to leave the plant itself just under a cold frame, you might want to go outside and hang some small Christmas lights on it. Now, that might seem really silly, but those Christmas lights inside of a small cold frame are going to really heat things up. You want to make sure the lights are not touching the plastic, of course. And you're going to have to keep an eye on it to make sure there's no unexpected problem, just like you would Christmas lights you put outside on your house. You know, check them to make sure they haven't gone off or whatever. But that's one way that a lot of people can overwinter bananas, palm trees, and other highly tropical plants in cold climate zones such as Indiana and Ohio. And believe me, it can be done. It just takes a little bit of extra work to get it done. So the other thing is if you have a cold frame or you have a greenhouse and you're getting snow like we are today, go outside, take a broom, and very gently brush that snow off the top. One reason is you don't want it to build up too heavy, too much weight, especially on a greenhouse because that can cause your plastic to sag. It can also cause a greenhouse to collapse, especially in these colder climate zones. Some of the kits just cannot hold the weight of snow. Even though they should be able to, they don't. The other thing is once the snow starts to cover your cold frame or your greenhouse, you're blocking out the little bit of natural light that we get. And as those of you in cold climate zones know, you really, really need every bit of sunlight you can get during the winter months to keep those plants alive. In our greenhouse, we use supplemental grow light. I use fluorescent lighting, four-foot tubes. I use one hot and one cold bulb. And that way, I get a bigger light spectrum. And I don't spend the money that the grow lights cost. And I really think the fluorescent bulbs last a lot longer than the grow lights. So I think they do a really good job, and especially for seedlings. The older plants seem to appreciate it too and will bloom on and off throughout the winter months because of that. Again, if you've never worked in the garden in winter, 
if you've never tried to grow anything that blooms in the winter or keep your vegetables alive over the winter, I would really like to encourage you to to give it, it may be a little bit late this year to get started. One plant that you may still be able to find in the stores is pansies. And these are an annual plant. The pansies are a really good flower to start with if you don't want to spend a lot of money and you just want to see what's going to happen. Don't buy the spring pansies, buy the fall pansies. Again, they may still be in your local garden center. And plant them in the ground. They may look like they die back to you if you get severe snows. But come spring, they're going to pop back up. They're going to bloom. They may even set and drop seed in your garden. Never be too hasty to pull them out. If you really can't stand the sight of a dying plant, plant something that helps disguise it. A good companion plant for hellebores is hosta because by the time the hellebores are dying down, the hostas are covering them up. For pansies, it depends on where you plant them, if they're shade or sun. But you can find other small plants that will cover them up. I just never, never get too anxious to pull anything out of the garden. When you do plant pansies, you want to mulch the root system. That's going to really help, especially if you're planting this late in the year. You can also try winter window boxes. Now, again, if it gets too cold, I suggest you bring those in at night or put them in an unheated garage. There are um, materials, insulating wraps that you can buy to wrap your window boxes. And you can grow a variety of plants in the winter boxes over winter. Miniature evergreens or other types of little miniature trees will often work. You can grow pansies. You can grow winter sweet peas. Just a lot of plants. Again, it's going to depend on what climate zone you're in, and it's going to depend on what side of the house that your window box is located on, how much sun versus shade that you have. So again, these are all things that you need to do a little research on your own about. And I want to highly recommend my book for those of you interested in working in the winter garden or even those of you with greenhouses that want to know more or cold frames. And again, the name of that book is The Complete Idiot's Guide to Year-Round Gardening. You can find it on Amazon. There is a free Kindle sample that you can download if you want to check it out and see what's in it before you buy.